Code to Enhance Learning presents the CEL video series for creating apps in Thunkable. Through this video series, we aim to introduce you to the world of creating your own apps through platforms like Thunkable. Hello everyone. This is Ayush and I'm excited to see you all today. As you all know, I love coding and I am a regular participant at CEL Hackathon. I will be your host for today. Welcome to the 11th episode of the series Indian Snack Shop Part 2 where we'll be coding the blocks. In the last episode, we learned how to design the screens for our Indian Snack Shop. In the last episode, we had designed the app like this in Thunkable. Today, we will write the blocks to complete our app, the Indian Snack Shop. We are in the block section of screen 1. We are going to make an animation so that buttons keep changing colors when we are on the screen. When screen 1 opens, I am going to set the button's background color to orange. I am going to wait for 0.5 seconds and then change the button color to pink. After which I will wait again for 0.5 seconds. As I want these to happen continuously, I am wrapping these codes in a forever block. When the button is clicked, we then navigate to screen 2. This is how our codes will look. Let's see how our app works. When we are on screen 1, the button color keeps changing. When we click the button, we move to screen 2. This brings us to task 1. Pause here and write the codes for screen 1. Create the button animation and navigate to screen 2. We are in the blocks of screen 2. We need a timer for the game to end. So let us start by creating a timer for our project. I will set the interval to 1 second, turn on looping and also enable the timer. Now I am going to create the variables for our project. I will first create the score variable and initiate it to 0. Next I will create the other variables needed which will look like this. As you can see the timer variable is initiated to 30 as we will be counting backwards till 0 in this game. There is also a variable called state which is initialized to order to begin with. As soon as the canvas is loaded, we need to start the timer. We also need to hide the order, selected item and selected chutney as they will become visible only when we click the check order button. We also set the score and time variables to their initial values. Our code looks like this. This brings us to task 2. Pause here and write the codes for screen 2. Add the timer element, create the variables needed for the project and code the actions that will take place when the canvas loads. The first thing the user will do on screen 2 is to click the check order button. When this button is clicked, we need to first check if the state variable's value is equal to order. If this condition is true, we need to display one of the three orders given by the customer. For this, we set the order variable to a random integer from 1 to 3. If order variable is equal to 1, we set order image number to 1, which is the samosa image. I am going to pause here and repeat the same codes for order variable values 2 and 3 where image number 2 is Vada and 3 is Idli. The completed code looks like this. After this, 
we show the order on the screen. We also change the button text to dispatch order. Once the order is displayed on screen, we need to fulfill the order. We do this by clicking the order item and the chutney. We will now code what happens when we click each of the ordered items. Once a mosa is clicked, we set the selected item image number to 1. We set the state variable to dispatch. Then we show the selected item. We do the same for the vada and idli. Where Vada has selected item image number as 2 and Idli as 3. We do similar steps for the selected chutneys. So for red chutney, we set the selected chutney image to, num to 1 and show the selected chutney. We repeat this for Sambar and Green Chutney, where Sambar has selected Chutney image number as 2 and Green Chutney as 3. The codes look like this. With this, we have served the customer's order in the plate. This brings us to task 3. Pause the video and code screen 2 as follows. Check the order from the customer and serve the main item in chutneys as per the customer's order. The next step is to check if the order we have served to the customer is the right combination. And if yes, we need to score a point and display the order successful message. If not, we need to display the order failed message. We add an if condition to the button, click block where we check if the state variable is equal to dispatch. Next, we add the AND logical operator to check if the selected item and the selected chutney are matching the customer's order. If the condition is true, we change the button text to order successful. We increase the score by one point and also display the score. If the condition is false, we will display the order failed message. Next, we set the state to order to check for the next order. Then we wait for 0 0.5 seconds. Then we set button text back to check order. We also hide the order, the selected item and the selected chutney. The code looks like this. The final part involves coding the timer which we started at the beginning of the game. When timer fires, we change the time variable by minus 1. We display the time in the time label. If the time becomes 0 or lesser, we navigate to screen 3 and stop the timer. This brings us to the end of coding screen 2.
we will test the app after we call screen 3 as well. This brings us to task 4. Pause here and continue the calls for screen 2. Check if the right combination of items are served to the customer to score points. Call the timer to stop the game after 30 seconds. Before we call screen 3, let us understand a bit more about variables that Thunkable offers. Till now, we have been using app variables in all of our projects. App variables work across screens and are stored in the app itself. Values are not carried over to the next session. Stored variables works across screens but is saved to the mobile device itself. This means that a stored variable can be retrieved from a previous session. Cloud variable works across screens but is also saved to a cloud database that shares data across users in the cloud. In our app, we will be using the stored variable to store the high score so that it is available across multiple games played on the same device. While a stored variable stores a single value to the device, you can also store multiple values to the device memory by using a key value pair. A key value pair is a data type that includes two pieces of data that have a set of associated values and a group of key identifiers. We are in the block section of screen 3. We will initialize the new stored variable and call it high score. Unlike app variable, we don't have to initialize the stored variable with a value since the value will be carried over from the previous session. When screen 3 opens, we will first display the score of the current game in the score label. We will check if the current score is greater than high score. If this condition is true, we will set the high score to the current score. Then, we will display the high score value in the high score label. Lastly, when we click the play again button, we will navigate to screen 1. This completed the coding of screen 3. Let us now test the completed project. We click the start game button on screen 1. Now we move to screen 2. The timer countdown starts. I will dispatch my orders to score points. A wrong combination will lead to a failed order. I got a score of 3. The high score is the same since this is my first game. Let's play again. As you can see, this time my score is 5 and the high score has also changed to 5. We now have a fully functional game. This brings us to task 5. Write codes for screen 3 where you will use stored variable to store high score in your device. Test the game to see if it works. You can make your Indian snack shop more interesting by having exotic food items which will get you more points when served. You can even decrease the timer to make the game harder. Do try your own variations to the game. Let us review some concepts that we learned today. Which variable type will store the value at the device level and will be available across sessions of the game? Pause the video and try to answer. The answer option is B. Stored variable. Hope you got that right. This brings us to the end of our app development with Thunkable series. I had a lot of fun coding these apps with you. Hope you learned how to code through these apps and how to make your own games. I will see you again in another interesting series on coding with CEL. This is Ayush signing off. Bye.